Welcome back to Mystery Island. Today's Bible lesson begins with that Old Testament story so familiar to all of us, Davy and the really big guy. And oh look, here comes Davy now, along with a little friend. So then, the police officer pulls over the Lamborghini, and the sheep inside says, Hey, my speed wasn't all that bad. But then the police officer says, Okay, but how about that illegal U-turn? Ha! <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Suddenly, Davy gets a text message from his dad. <gasps> Hold on. I got a text message. You better head back to the flock. I think something's wrong. All right. It's from my dad. Um, Davy, I need a favor. Please go down to the camp and take some food for your brothers. Red heart emoji. Looks like I have to bolt. When Davy reaches the kids' club army, it is very quiet. In fact, he can't even find his brothers. It seems that everyone is hiding. Food delivery! Anybody home? Shucks, I hope I get a tip. Hello? Davy! Okay, Davy! Is that you I see down there or what? What do you think you're doing? You need to hide, brother! Okay? Can't you hear that really big guy or what? No, no, Tang. That's the wrong line. That's for when you play the really big guy in Jack and the Beanstalk. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, um, let me see now here. Um, what's my line? Oh, 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 yeah. Here it is. Bam! Send out a man who dare fights me, you cowards! <laughs> Bro, you still there? Who is this guy? Why does he think he can take on the army of God? And besides, we're the good guys. Davy, that's that really big guy, Tango Lion from Cucamonga. You with me? Oh. He's the biggest, strongest, and baddest of them all, okay? He wants to destroy the army of God. And all the soldiers are afraid of him. You got me so far! How can all our soldiers be afraid? We are the army of God. And besides, we're the good guys. I'm not scared. I'll go fight that really big guy. <laughs> so, hey, hey guys, I want to get this, okay? My brother, the shepherd boy, says he's going to fight Jay! <laughs> Okay, brother, just don't forget me to bring me my lunch, okay? You dig? And now, with only his staff and a sling, Davy. What? Excuse me, narrator, my arm is not broken. Not that kind of sling, the kind you use to shoot rocks. Oh. This kind of sling. Sorry, narrator, dude. Carry on. Thanks, kid. And now, before Davy faces the really big guy, he bows to pray. All right, God. It's just you and me, baby. And I know you did not make us with a spirit of fear. Let's go get that really big guy. Our little hero goes out to meet the really big guy. And when Tang sees the size of Davy, he begins to laugh. <laughs> Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks and stones? Sure you are. Here, boy. Here, boy. Go fetch me, boy. Stop that! Aw, oh, would you like a little doggy treat? No, oh, better stop that! Or I'm gonna get my big brother on you! All right, come. 
Come on, you big baby. You come at me with a sword, but I come at him in the name of God, and he's a lot cooler than you are, buddy. The really big guy laughs, but Davy whirls his swing, takes careful aim, and lets it fly. The really big guy laughs even louder until he gets hit with a rock right between the eyes. Then the really big guy goes down with a thud. Now the army of Cucamonga runs off in terror. Davy and all of the Kids Club Army will rejoice and praise God for their victory. Hello? Hey, bro. Lunch is on me. You dig? Yes. The end. Oh, Tommy, that was fun, wasn't it? I hope our boys and girls at home enjoyed it. I just hope they recognized it. So, kids, did our skit sound familiar to you? What story was it? Uh-huh, you got it. David and Goliath. That's right. Um, good job, boys, boys and girls. Um, I have a poster here that helps us to talk more about our story today. Um, What do you think of it, Tommy? I think it's really nice. Look, there's David using his slingshot to put a rock right between Goliath's eyes. David looks really small compared to Goliath, doesn't he? Yes, he does. You know, the Bible says that Goliath was more than nine feet tall. Wow. No wonder the Israelite army was afraid of him. Yes. Goliath kept shouting at them every day, day after day. And the army was so afraid that no one even dared face him until David showed up. Now, what do you think able, David was able to do that none of the other soldiers were able to do? Uh, what did he remember that the soldiers forgot? How to pack a lunch? <laughs> um, no, I'll give you a clue. What did David do just before he fought Goliath. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, he prayed. That's right. Yep. You see, David knew who God is, and he trusted God. He heard Goliath saying things against God. And so David knew that God would be with him, and he would fight and win against Goliath because, David, because, God, because God was more powerful than Goliath or anyone else. So... David told Goliath something. He said, the battle was the Lord's. I like that. Kids, could you say that with me? Can you say the battle is the Lord's? Let's do it together. The battle, the battle is, is the Lord's. Lord's. That's right. Um, you know, our Bible verse for today reminds us to trust in God just like David did. And it is from Proverbs. Chapter 3, verse 5, and it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Miss hmm. Ray, I'm not sure what the word trust means. Oh, um, trust means when you really want to believe and you really can believe someone based on what they've done in the past and what they promised that they're going to do. Um, like, Ooh. um... You trust when your mom, that your mom's always going to pick you up from school, right? I sure do. Well, there was that one time when I had to wait for a while because she was late. And I got a little scared. Of course you did. Because at that moment, your trust in her was a little shaky. But I bet your mom has successfully picked you up from school dozens, if not hundreds of times before that. And so... Um, that remembering that probably helped reassure you that she would pick you up, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. I didn't understand why she was running late that day, but I never thought that she was going to forget about me. She's had a lot of practice being a mom. Exactly. And the reason you can trust your parents is because of what they have done for you in the past. And we can trust God in the same way. Um, here's another example. Our animal pal, 
for today. Ooh. Trusty the macaw. He looks cool. Yeah. Well, um, pirates like to have parrots as pets. And parrots can live for a really long time, like 60 years. Wow, that's as old as my grandpa. Yeah, um, and that's old enough for a pirate to really, long enough for a pirate to really get to know his parrot um, and to trust him as a lifelong friend. Um, but we have someone that we can trust even more than any animal or any person, and that's God. I guess so, but... I can see my parrots, and a pirate can see his parrot, but I can't see God. Yes, I know, and that can make it a little harder. But we can trust God because of what the Bible says. The Bible tells us that we can trust God. Remember my treasure that I've had all week to share with you? Shiny. And the Bible's perfect because it's from God. And so if it says that we can trust God, then that makes it perfectly true. Hmm. I guess so. What do you think about that, kids? Um, let me remind you oh. that this week at VBS we've learned a lot about God. And if we think back through our different Bible lessons, we can think of people that, that learned a lot about God. So you remember Jonah? Do you mm -hmm. think Jonah learned how to trust God? What do you think, kids? Uh-huh. Okay, sure. Well, Jonah might have doubted God from the belly of the big fish. Then the fish vomited him onto a beach. That certainly was God using his power to help Jonah. Exactly. And what about Isaiah? After King Uzziah died, what did God show Isaiah? Um, didn't he show him sitting on his throne? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, earthly kings die, but not God. He is king of kings. And he has all the power in the world, yet he uses it with love and kindness and never in a bad way. God has been doing that for a long time, all the way back to the Garden of Eden. What did we learn about Adam and Eve? God... Didn't God keep his promises to them? He sure did. Hey, kids, who did God send to earth to fix the mess that Adam and Eve made? Yes, that's right. Jesus! Jesus is and always will be our greatest reassurance that God is trustworthy. God showed us his love for us when Jesus died for us. And just like he was watching out for David that day when he fought Goliath, God is always watching after each of all of us. Um, uh, Mrs. Ray, I, I think it's time for me to say goodbye to the kids. I've got plans. Tang and I are going surfing. Well, this I've got to see. Goodbye, kids from Mystery Island, and thank you for joining us this week. Goodbye, friends! <laughs>